Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. I'm Kenneth Amaduri, and I'm joined today with a very special guest, a first-time guest here at Crush the Street. And uh, we're going to be speaking to none other than Timothy Draper. He has founded 30 Draper Venture Funds. He's a uh, founder of Draper University, BizWorld, and two statewide initiatives to improve government, governance and education. Uh, he's an author, and he's someone who really called crypto the boom of crypto. He essentially predicted 10K Bitcoin down to the day, and now we're expecting and we're anticipating a $250,000 price projection. He's standing by that, and uh, we're going to talk to him about that today. But without any further ado, Timothy Draper, thanks for coming on Crush the Street with me. Terrific. Well, good. I'm looking forward to crush, crushing the street. Well, that's what we like to do here. And uh, let's start off. I mean, I, I really want to focus on crypto if we could. Um, $250,000 price prediction. Obviously, a lot, of, uh, a lot of uncertainty in the markets when it comes to crypto. If you look at the overall price collapse uh, from $20,000 to roughly $4,000, now, uh, it's pretty scary for the mainstream, but for those of us who've been in it for a while, $4,000 Bitcoin is still pretty strong compared to where it was, you know, 18 months ago or, you know, two years ago. I mean, we're looking at a really strong asset class here. So uh, what are your thoughts on this? And uh, are you sticking with that price projection of 250000 by 2022? Yes, um, absolutely. The um, the way I, I see this is um, <laughs> uh, I, it's very clear to me that in four or five years, we are going to um, look and have the choice between using crypto and dollars. And all of the things that you can do with dollars, you will be able to do with crypto. And you'll be able to do more. You'll be able to... Um, you know, make micro payments. You'll be able to do airdrops. You'll be able to um, send money without paying Western Union 16% to somewhere overseas. You'll be able to pay your employees more quickly and more efficiently. You'll be able to handle uh, insurance much more effectively and efficiently. And there will be no um, no accounting fees because it'll all be done on the blockchain. So, um, and you won't be at the mercy of some political force, uh, a political party or, or a politician who just decides to overprint the money or underprint the, print the money and uh, crush their economy. This is global. Bitcoin is global, decentralized, open, transparent. It's, uh, it makes our um, it makes it so that if um, let's say you're in Syria and you um, and your your family has great wealth in Syria, but then you become a refugee, you come to Greece or somewhere else and you have nothing, no money. Um, well, if you had Bitcoin and your country was Syria. Uh, you could uh, you could leave with your family and pull down that Bitcoin in whatever country you ended up settling in, and you wouldn't be a burden to the society there. Um, There's so many, you know, if you're the the uh, Lucas film and you do a Star Wars movie and you have to you have 15,000 people working on the Star Wars movie and every one of them has to get you know a check for three dollars and fifty cents every quarter um and you've got to you know send out checks uh it cost lucasfilm about seven dollars to send each of those checks to all those people well with bitcoin you can just do micro payments and drop them into wallets and it could be down to the tw you know every time somebody pays twenty dollars to go to the movie uh, that money would all be spread amongst whoever it was supposed to be spread to in, in a, in a predefined waterfall. And uh, the, the uh, system would cost uh, Lucasfilm nothing. 
there are so many other applications and so many ways where you can use Bitcoin and you can't use dollars. And it's just a matter of when Bitcoin can be used as easily as a dollar that uh, people will go and go, oh, okay, I get it. Um, yeah, that's and powerful. Uh, Tim, so those are the positive things. And I tend to agree with you on these, which was what got me and, you know, Crush the Street here interested in crypto and, and being ahead of this trend, which we're very grateful for. But what about the challenges that's facing crypto, specifically Bitcoin? Do you see anything that's detrimental or potentially detrimental that could derail the destiny of Bitcoin and you know the predictions that you know you and myself and others have for its future? Well, there are lots of people who want the world back the way it was, um, but it's very difficult to put the genie back in the bottle. Um, and so I, I'm sure many banks are very concerned because they're realizing that you know they've been providing a service that uh, is no longer needed, and uh, and and many governments are threatened by by a decentralized uh, currency because then that's the beginning of decentralizing government, and uh, and and governments will have to now compete for their citizens, uh, where they never used to in the past. They used to just sort of say, "Well, you're our citizens because you live here." and we will tax you and spend and do whatever we want to do, and you're at our mercy. Well, now that's not the case, and some governments are looking at that and saying, oh, I'm, I'm afraid of it, like the Chinese government is looking at it and saying, I'm afraid of it, and so we're going to make Bitcoin illegal. But the Japanese government says this is a huge opportunity, and we're going to make Bitcoin a national currency, and they have. And they've made ICOs very legal and very easy to do in Japan. And so the Bitcoin entrepreneurs from China are going to naturally move to Japan or some other place if they can, because <clears throat> um, the world's now an open community. And, uh, and you know, it's always a little, um, it's, it's interesting to see as people uh, you know, are trying to keep those wa those walls, they keep those those barriers up um, to sort of assert that they um, that they are a you know a, a phys physical tribe uh, rather than being post tribal and think in terms of being global. Yeah. Uh, you know. Like Malta ended up with Binance. Binance was in China as a $10 billion business and Malta um, created the right regulation so that uh, China would go there instead. I mean, Binance would go there instead of uh, China. Uh, this is one of those times. And then, um, you know, of course the banks, JP Morgan was saying, oh God, this Bitcoin thing is really a, uh, you know, horrible, whatever. And then all of a sudden he, he realized that we got to do it. And so they created the JP Morgan, whatever token, um, that it will be a centralized token. I'm sure some people will use it, but, um, but I think once people make that leap, they're going to certainly make the other leap, which is, well, yeah, I'd rather have Bitcoin because it's decentralized. Yeah. It's interesting because I feel like the JP Morgan coin was kind of a, a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, it's not really what the Bitcoin community was founded on, but it almost is like this uh, stamp of approval uh, for the mainstream who was largely critical of cryptocurrencies. This is almost like a stamp of approval that, hey, this, there is something to it. The, the biggest names in the world are interested in this cryptocurrency and creating their own. So I feel like it was a positive thing for Bitcoin and, you know. Oh yeah, it's very the, fun. The, um, it's it's a little like, up. it's a little like when um, Apple uh, computer was working on the personal computer and then IBM jumped into the fray and there was the IBM PC. Um, 
all of a sudden all the businesses said, oh, it's okay to have personal computers in the office. And, and then it was just a matter of, do they buy an Apple or do they buy an IBM? And, right. and I think the same thing is gonna happen here where people will go, oh, wow. Well. well, so JP Morgan, the people who were poo-pooing Bitcoin are all, all of a sudden copying it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, uh, yeah, that's so true. Well, Elon Musk put out some uh, interesting statements saying, you know, that his belief on cryptocurrency is an uh, improved alternative to conventional money. I mean, these are massively important people, people that uh, conventional media really listens to, and they're talking really positive about crypto. And again, I think it's that momentum that's continuing to self edify this new sector. It's so brand new, it's so early stage, and we're, it's not saturated. We're so far from saturation, but we're watching the market really start to develop, and that's what's exciting about what we're witnessing in the crypto space. Yeah, um, <clears throat> well, you, you're seeing the forward thinkers uh, saying, hey, yeah, this is really important, um, Crypto is important. Bitcoin's important. This um, this world is uh, this new decentralized world is important to the future of society, and uh, and then um, you're seeing the people. You know, actually, a lot of people have been muted. Uh, you know, I remember Warren Buffett said something negative about. Bitcoin, and then I thought, well, of course he's going to say something negative about it. He has so many dollars that he probably doesn't like the idea that there's a better currency out there. Sure. Uh, and so he um, was uh, is sort of thinking, well, let's keep it the way it is instead of looking forward and saying how how it can be. And I think um, the future moves much faster than any of us anticipate. And, uh, and we start when there's something better, we demand it and it spreads around the world faster than ever before because we're all interconnected. So, um, this is a better currency. Bitcoin's a better currency and it's going to spread around the world. So we're definitely looking at a lot of the millennial trends. I mean, this is now a generation larger than the baby boomers, but in terms of purchasing power, the baby boomers are, you know, way ahead of where millennials are. But there, many are talking about the transfer of wealth from the baby boomer generation to the millennials. And having said that, do you think that cryptocurrency is going to be largely accepted by millennials who might be more open to technology and innovation than, than maybe older folks who might be a little more set in their ways? Yeah, that, I think that's exactly what's happened. Um, and if you go around and you ask um, somebody at random if they'd rather have $4,000 or one Bitcoin, um, if you ask somebody who's sort of over 45, um, they would rather have the $4,000. And if you ask people who are under 35, they would rather have the Bitcoin. And so there is a slow but steady movement um, as, as the old group to sort of dies off and the new group comes and becomes a big part of the uh, world economy uh, that we will all be saying, hey, Bitcoin's a better deal. And, you know, it's pretty interesting, uh, you know, think about being a millennial, maybe in America, and you say, okay, I've just come out of college, I'm $200,000 in debt, and I'm realizing that I don't like this economic system that these guys have created. And then they're looking and they're going, hey, there's this other thing that all these other guys that are really great um, are starting to use, why don't I use that? And I think that that is, um, is exciting and dynamic and uh, 
you know, it'll take some time, but, uh, but it, I think all the thought process that went into Bitcoin originally and all the, the excitement and all of that, that it was happening in 2017, um, that is going, is, has already penetrated the, the mindset of the millennial. Yeah. And, it's, and they're just thinking, when do we take over and we don't have to put up with these guys who are still talking about fiat currencies? So I'm, uh, the trend of this interview has been me asking you positive things. Hey, what's the negative? What's the positive again? And then I'm going to ask you one more thing that could be negative about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. There's some rumors that, you know, Roger Ver, Ver is going to be selling his Bitcoin the greater question would be, what is the risk of the whales that are holding Bitcoin, the ones that own, you know, the majority of it, uh, selling their Bitcoin? Would that be a catastrophic moment for Bitcoin? Do you see that happening? And is it a risk in your opinion? No, that's been happening all along. I mean, I, there's a marketplace out there and it's a highly traded marketplace. And just like any other currencies, any other stocks or any assets or, or currencies, um, these, uh, there, there is a very healthy marketplace for Bitcoin and, and, and a few of the others. Um, some are very thinly traded. So if, if somebody wanted to drop all of their, you know, I don't know, pick a, pick a currency that's that's you know not particularly relevant they wanted to drop all that uh, on the market that would really affect it but um, I think there is plenty of appetite at the right price for um, for anybody's Bitcoin so if Roger Ver wants to sell uh, you know I might be there buying <laughs> Well, Tim, I'd like to close out the interview here with one final question. Um, it's about technology and innovation and really artificial intelligence. And I'll, and I'll ask you this. Machine learning is machine earning. And what does that mean to you in terms of jobs and where the economy is going over the next five to 10 years? Yeah, the machines are going to be able to... Um you know, do things and pay each other with Bitcoin. And, uh, and a lot of things will happen without human involvement. And that actually frees up the human. Uh, artificial intelligence is, uh, is so fabulous that, that we're starting to find machines being able to do a lot of our mundane tasks. Uh, and I, I think I wanna quote my son, Adam, who said, who said, okay, artificial intelligence is gonna take all of our jobs. Doesn't matter what you do, it's gonna take all of our jobs. So then what do you do? So what's next? And, uh, and it's a great exercise because you just think through all the mundane tasks you do all day and you get a, a machine to do them all for you, then you're freed up to do other things. And I think that could create some human creativity that we've never seen before. This could be one of the greatest human times ever uh, where, where people are just, um, you know, every, every thought, every inspiration, whatever gets developed, gets spread throughout the world. And we just keep living better and better. And we explore more and more. Uh, it could be really quite extraordinary. So uh, AI is one of the great gifts from humanity to humanity. <laughs> well, I couldn't agree with you more, but I, I must say I'm thankful I was born in the day of air conditioning because, man, it would have sucked living prior to uh, the invention of AC in this world where we go over 80 degrees. Certainly but, um, in a lot of countries that's the case. Certainly a lot of different <laughs> cities have that problem. I know, I know. <laughs> Well, wow, we're, we're very blessed. Uh, Timothy Draper, everyone. Tim, thank you so much for coming on Crush the Street. If people want to learn more about you, read your books, 
uh, engage in the things that you're working on and you do, let them know where they can go and what they can expect to find. So, um, yeah, if you're 20 to 30 years old and you want to um, start a business, uh, go to draperuniversity.com and, and uh, apply. Uh, it's really a transformative experience. If you are curious about what we, the way we think, uh, buy my book. Uh, it's How to Be the Startup Hero by Tim Draper. And then um, if you're an entrepreneur, I recommend uh, that you, uh, if you put a business plan together, um, send it to us, uh, Tim at Draper.vc. And if you are a, um, uh, an investor, uh, an LP, uh, we're always open to discuss uh, opportunities there. So uh, thanks so much for having me on the show. And uh, yeah, if you send me a link, I'll, um, I'll put it out on our... Uh, uh, Absolutely, I'll sir. Well, we appreciate you taking the time with us. Uh, everyone, Timothy Draper, uh, we're, you know, we're fortunate to speak with some of the greatest minds in the economic space, and we were not let down today whatsoever. Tim, thanks for coming on Crush the Street. All right, go crush the street.